Hey everybody, thanks for clicking on the video. This is David Pendleton, and I'm gonna walk you through the Frosty Peaks Tournament. This is Rookie Division, and it's gonna cover the front nine holes. This is my second time recording. I don't know what's going on. The other video has been uploading to YouTube for over two hours, so I apologize for the delay. But here we go, minus 16, front nine. Uh, things went really well. Unfortunately, as you can see, I missed hole number one. Um, that really stinks to miss an easy hole like that. That was the only great shot that I hit on the front nine. So, regardless, thanks for clicking on the video. If you're not a subscriber, please uh, become one. It would mean a lot to me. And if you find this video helpful, go ahead and just take a second there and hit that thumbs up button for me. Uh, that's big for creators like myself. So here we go. Uh, hole number one, I'll go as fast as possible. 10% elevation. Nothing crazy about this drive. We're gonna play it how we have in all tournament. As you can see, I'm not using full top spin. I'm using a little bit over four and a half bars with one bar of side spin to the right. Really right at four and a half bars of top spin. I'm using a little bit of curl as you can see. We do hit a perfect ball. And then we get to sing the power up the fairway and it lands really nicely, which puts us at a shot with our thorn. And remember, we play this at minus 10% elevation. We do use backspin and we wanna make sure that on this hole, we always have the ball guideline going through the pin. That is the most consistent way to play this hole. Again, this is an uphill shot. It is minus 10% elevation. We do fire off a perfect ball. And we get that thing to drop on the right hand side of the cup. So there we go. Good start on that account. Wish I'd have had it on my other. All right. Now this is gonna bring us to hole number two. One thing I want you to know about hole number two is I'm going for a home run, okay? Extra mile eight, I'm gonna use a berserker. As you can see, I came prepared to play this hole with a katana, but I noticed we were getting tailwind. Now, if you don't have the clubs and you don't have that ball, then you're gonna to wanna to lay up on the fairway that we have been laying up on in the qualifying round and in the opening round. And keep in mind, I did get the albatross in both of those rounds. So if you'd like to see what that shot looks like, go ahead and go over to one of the other videos after this, and there is albatross shots. Um, but if you have the clubs, this is the best way to go about this one right here. We're going to go full top spin. As you can see there, full top spin, one and a half bars of left side spin. I'm pulling it 10% elevation. I am pushing back up to max to get our distance back on the drive. And here I'm going with full overpower. Was lucky to hit a perfect ball there as that's difficult to do when you're going full OP. but we bounce and we roll down to the bottom part of the fairway like we were looking for. That leaves us with shot number two. Shot number two, I'm playing at 10% elevation. And one thing to know is I start with three bars of backspin. Um, but then the green is a little glitchy. I'm sorry, four bars of backspin. Well, no, it probably should be three. Yep, three bars of backspin. And I get a little glitch here on the green. You can see my ball guideline is there, then it goes away. So what you need to do if that happens is you need to reduce it by about half of a bar of backspin which is gonna make you play further back on the fairway, and that gives you the consistent ball guideline that you're looking for. From here, 10% push, elevation. Did you get that perfect ball? And you see here, we get a nice roll, dead center for the albatross. All right, that's gonna bring us to hole number three. The shot you were seeing is hole number three played 10 or played 20% at max. And what we need to do here is we need to play this 10% um, at max using the same spin. I'm going three bars of side spin to the right and just a sliver of back spin. You can see I've got the ball guideline going through the pin because we are getting a little bit of headwind. And ultimately, um, you know, those, those hurt when you roll the cup like that. But if I would have used 10% numbers at max distance, that ball would have dropped for a hole in one. So that's what I recommend that you do. All right, hole number four. Now I am using a Kingmaker here only because it's the finals and I'm looking to reduce the wind as much as possible on shot number two to try to give me a little bit of, a little bit of advantage. That is why I never use Kingmakers and Titans and things like that in one-on-one -on -one tour play. I always save them for tournaments. And that's what I recommend you do as well. But from here, I'm going 
I'm taking a normal shot, no overpower. You see here about a fourth of a ball of curl to the right. And we're just looking to make sure that we land on the fairway. We clip the rough, but we roll out. That's not a problem because this fairway rolls nice downhill. And as you can see, we stop. Plenty of fairway left to take this shot. Now we're gonna go for shot number two, which is played at 10% elevation. Again, I'm a big backspin player. I go for two and a half bars of backspin here. Then I reduce it to make sure that I have a good developed ball guide line. So now I've got two bars of backspin. I'm making sure my ball guide line goes through the hole and out the back of the cup. I always do that with a thorn because the dangerous part about a thorn is you could come up short if you use too much backspin. But you can see here, we get a perfect ball. Not sure why my opponent's laughing, but um, either way, we sneak it in the right-hand side of the cup and we drop another eagle on hole number four. Brings us to hole number five. Hole number five, the shot you are seeing me play is 15% at mid-distance. This shot needs to be played 0% at mid-distance, and you're going to see why. Three and a half miles an hour wind blowing from right to left. Notice where I'm aiming there. So I've got my ball guideline. The second bounce is in the light green row with the end of my ball guideline pointing directly down the middle of that dark green square. Now, when I pull my rings here at 15%, it ends up being 1.8 rings to the right. and we just barely missed the right-hand side. So again, if I look at the app, and if I, if I would have played this shot at 0% elevation at mid-distance with the same landing point, that ball would have dropped for a hole-in-one. So that's what I uh, my recommend, recommendation is to you. Play at 0%, aim at the exact same spot, and good luck with hole number five. Brings on to hole number six. Hole number six, finally getting some tailwind. As a matter of fact, we get back-to-back -back tailwind. So we're just gonna use a Titan here just for the power and we don't want the wind reduction. This is nothing new, nothing different. We're just trying to power this ball as far up the fairway as we can without taking a dangerous overpower shot. You don't need to overpower this shot. This is plenty of club. You're gonna see with the big dog on my second shot, I have to use about, I think it was either two or three bars of backspin. So, you know, that means we have plenty of distance. As you can see, there are three bars of backspin. I take it down to two, so two bars of backspin, two bars of left side spin, a little bit of curl to the left, and even with those two bars of backspin, I come in here to the back of the green, um, favoring the right hand side. So we are totally good on hole number six. Now that brings us into hole number seven. Hole number seven, I got the hole in one on both accounts, five bars of backspin. We're gonna play this one to one. So you're gonna see here 3.8 mile per hour wind we're gonna pull this 3.8 rings. You can see that I'm trying to aim just a little bit on the left-hand side of the cup, as you see here, because we're getting tailwind. I'm leaving the ball guideline short as well, and we're getting a little bit of crosswind to the right. That's why you see me favoring the left-hand side. Now, keep in mind, this is almost four mile per hour wind. So we're gonna get a little bit more of a push um, than you would like maybe if you have 2.7 miles per hour. So keep that in mind but we do sneak this one into the cup, almost dead center, and it drops in for a hole in one. Now, here's a much lower wind. This is 2.6. You can see I'm gonna use the exact same uh, backspin, so five bars of backspin. You can see here that I'm gonna leave my ball guideline a little bit short of the hole, and this time I'm favoring the left-hand cup, uh, but not as, much as, not as much as I did the first time. This is just a fraction more to the right. It's not much of a difference at all. It's a very, very slim amount, and it may not even make a difference, because either way, both balls sneak into the cup for a hole in one, and this is on the left-hand side. So uh, we're really good on hole number seven. That's a great shot with that five bars of backspin and playing it one for one with that exact same setup. Brings in the hole number eight. Now, hole number eight, we're going for a home run, okay? I've been trying to do this all tournament, um, but here we go. Full top, one right. I'm stretching out to make sure I've got enough distance to get my ball into the fairway down there, and I do. Take this shot here, 10%. Now you can see that I did not push back up to max. Um, that was a brain fart. We do need to push back up to max to make sure we get as much distance as possible. Had I pushed back up to max, I might have been able to clear the rough and not roll out and get further down. 
but that's okay. It's not a big deal. It leaves us with a nice shot with our wedge here at 20% elevation. I'm playing this one at max distance. I'm using a little bit of backspin and I'm just trying to bounce the ball into the cup as you see there. Get the perfect ball. And unfortunately, I left it right there at the cup. We just burned the right hand edge. That's a very good shot. I think if you just aim a little bit more left and use the same type of spin, you're gonna be okay. But I had an idea of what would happen if I use the same berserker and I tried to lay up here at the top right hand part of the fairway. I was hoping I would get to take a shot with my thorn and I did get to take a shot with the thorn. I was trying to see if this would play any more consistent at 40% elevation. I do like that I'm at max distance because it makes uh, pulling the rings easier because you know exactly what to use on the app. But you can see here I'm using backspin and I'm making myself get right into the hole just like that with the ball guideline through the cup but barely. Now again I pulled this at 40% this is a very significant downhill shot. We get the perfect ball. And we still just barely miss. So it does look like we need a little bit of an offset with the way this wind is blowing. But, you know, all in all, a very good opportunity for us to pick up an eagle there. Brings us into hole number nine. Hole number nine, I'm only using a kingmaker in tailwind um, because I want to reduce the wind as much as possible when going for the albatross. I know that in tailwind on this hole, regardless if I use a titan or kingmaker, I'm going to be just fine getting the ball down the fairway here. The only thing I would say is be careful on your top spin. You see me here take one bar of top spin off and you're going to see me use no overpower. The worst thing that you could do is hit this ball too far and roll into the rough down here at the top. Now you would still easily eagle the hole if you did that, but it's really going to be a difficult albatross going from the rough. From here, um, shot number two for the albatross, I'm playing at 10%. I am playing it between mid and max. I'm playing it straight up with five and a half bars of backspin. This hole uh, always requires a lot of backspin for good ball control. And we do pick up the albatross here. I really hope this video helps everybody. Congratulations on making it to the final round. Please become a subscriber. Please hit that thumbs up button. And if you found all my content helpful throughout the week, you can show me a little love to my PayPal if you're able to do so and you have the means. It's always at the comment section of all my videos. Thank you for watching and best of luck in the finals.